David. So Dr. Nasli Demirel is a marine biologist with a focus on fisheries conservation and the ecosystem approach to fisheries management. She earned her PhD in marine biology from Istanbul University and later gained experience in fisheries conservation at GEOMAR, Germany, working closely with Dr. Reiner Froze on data limited stock assessment methods. Um, since 2015, NAS has been a major, a senior researcher at the Institute of Marine F Sciences and Management at Istanbul University. Her work primarily explores the state of marine ecosystems and fisheries resources in the Eastern Mediterranean, particularly under the influence of environmental stressors. Welcome, Dr. Demirel. Thank you, Deng. Okay, so good morning there and good evening here. I am very pleased to uh, participate in this fish fisheries seminar series, which I'm also a fan of. And I would like to talk about a case study to discuss how marine ecosystems can be impacted under common marine stressors in this Anthropocene era. So let's start then. Humans' relationship with sea is deep and complex through culture, economics, recreation, and exploration. For centuries, humans have been trying to understand the dynamics of the sea. And today, we have advanced technologies such as satellite imagery and remote sensing technologies, and they allow us to monitor vast ocean areas and collect valuable data on sea surface temperature, ocean currents, and even the distribution of marine organisms. Yet our understandings of marine ecosystem is limited. From past to present, there is incredible amount of data collected and produced from various sources. And this requires good data analytics. Here, I would like to briefly mention revolutionary the digital twin ocean, which is a high resolution, multidimensional and almost real time virtual representation of the ocean. It's a combination of ocean observations and artificial intelligence and advanced modeling to simulate ocean processes for better management decision. So this is where we are on understanding of marine dynamics. However, these incredible systems are encompassing a variety of stressors, each presenting its own unique challenge. For example, overfishing is perhaps one of the most immediate and pressing concerns. This unsustainable practice depletes fish populations and also hinders entire marine food web. Pollution comes in many forms, from plastic waste to chemical runoff, Invasive species often introduced uh, unintentionally through ballast waters or shipping, and they unsettle na native ecosystems. Habitat loss, especially the critical ones like coral reefs, mangroves, and seagrass beds, means losing nurseries for countless marine species and buffers against uh, storms. So climate change is perhaps the most daunting of all stressors, and it is altering the very fabric of our oceans. Those were the common marine stressors we are caused and we are faced, but how to examine them? So in his great paper published in 1993, John Caddy greatly described the uh, impact of human activities on enclosed and semi-enclosed seas. These, are, uh, these areas are likely warning systems for chains in our oceans. They act as a laboratory to study how human actions affect marine life. Marginal seas don't exchange much with the open ocean and they get a lot of stuff from the land. So they can't handle the impacts of human activities well. This means when we study the food webs and fisheries here, we have to consider the effects of environmental change as well. So there are two big problems in these seas, nutrient enrichment and overfishing. Both have similar effects first, less diversity, uh, then more productivity at first, and finally dominance by short-lived species, especially in the open water. So it's hard to separate the effects of these problems because generally they happen at the same time. And now I'd like to introduce you to a remarkable semi-enclosed basin known as the Sea of Marmara. 
This sea holds a unique position as a transitional zone between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, and it is recognized one of the seven ecoregions together with the Aegean Sea and the Mediterranean. The Sea of Marmara owes its significance to Dardanelles and Bosphorus Straits, which are among the narrowest and the longest straits in the European Mediterranean region. So these natural passages connect distinct marine basins and also play a crucial role in regulating the exchange of waters, nutrients, and marine life between them. The Sea of Marmara covers a small area with moderately deep regions. It's like a big bowl with some underwater valleys and reefs. The deepest part is over 1,000 meters, but the rest uh, air are shallow areas up to 200 meters. So let's look at the water circulation. Uh, the surface current occurs by water comes from the Black Sea through the Bosphorus. And once the Black Sea water enters, it splits into different streams. So some goes east, some goes west, and some go north. These currents can create circular patterns in different parts of the sea. And in the lower part, water from the Aegean Sea flows in through the Dardanelles, and it flows a canyon-like path. Also, Black Sea is above average 26 centimeters in the water level than Marmara. So the Sea of Marmara has a unique hydrography. And why I'm saying this? Because it has two layers of water separated by a strong middle layer starting at 15 meters and ends at the uh, 30 meters. So please look at the vertical profile of salinity and the temperature in the graph. So this water stratification is permanent, meaning not occurs seasonally as it happens in temperate climate seas uh, uh, called thermocline layer. So, so because there is a very strong vertical salinity gradient, which separates the upper part and the lower part of the sea with holocline layer. So this is density dependent uh, stratification. So there is a high seasonality in the mixing of Black Sea and the Mediterranean water, for example, during summer, due to high surface temperature and less wind, uh, the Bosphorus current is stronger, making the surface less salty. In the winter, strong winds and cooler surface waters mix the layers, making the surface saltier. And when we look at the renewal, uh, water renewal time, the upper layer can be fully renewed in three to four months, while the lower layer takes uh, much longer, about six to seven years. So this unique hydrography was center of attention in history as well, especially Bosphorus. For example, in the late 17th century, an Italian engineer, Luigi Ferdinando Marsili, started a journey from Venice to Istanbul and conducted some groundbreaking scientific measurements. He measured the density of seawater and found there was hidden current beneath the surface of Bosphorus. His experiments identified the differences between uh, water density between the two seas created a hydrostatic pressure driving the flow of water through the straits. So this scientific inquiry marked the birth of oceanography by Bosphorus. So if we continue, likewise, its physical properties, the chemistry of the upper layer it's, is also shaped by the Black Sea water in the Sea of Marmara. This water plays a significant role in determining the nutrient levels in the sea. So there is a permanent layer in the Sea of Marmara shaped by holocline as salinity stratification, but it is also uh, matched the thermocline as temperature stratification. And now there is also nutric line as nutrient stratification. Those layers uh, lie between the 15 to uh, 30 meters and they all act like a barrier for salinity, temperature and nutrient and they limit the mixing between the upper and lower layers material exchange. In general, the Black Sea stands as the primary source of nutrients and organic matter. This is why the upper layer chlorophyll A values indicate high productivity similar to the Black Sea. So most of the surface nutrients are utilized by phytoplankton uh, through photosynthesis. Phytoplankton primarily inhabit uh, in the upper 20 meters because this zone receives the sufficient light for photosynthesis. So this region also coincides with the nutricline layer. 
So I can say that the health of the Sea of Marmara's ecosystem can vary depending on the location and the time of the year. It can range from a relatively balanced state mesotrophic conditions in summer and autumn season and overabundance of nutrients, meaning a eutrophic condition in winter and springtime. Also, eutrophic uh, structure lessens from northeast to the southwest. So what about the macro species, microbiodiversity? So Bosphorus is recognized as ecological corridor that provides ecological connectivity between Black Sea and the Mediterranean. So far, there are one thousands of macro species, including invertebrates and algae, between uh, 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 and over 250 fish species are reported in the sea. When we look at the origins, habitats and resilience levels of its fish fauna, a substantial number of fish originating from the Atlanto Mediterranean and uh, five species that hail from the Indo-Pacific region. A significant majority are demersal, following by pelagics, meaning a substantial number can be discovered at shallow areas up to 200 meters deep. And the resilience classification indicates that high portion fall into the medium resilience category, indicating their ability to adapt various conditions. So considering Marmara's physical structure, it is well expected also. So finally, 25 fish species, mostly elasmo branches, listed in the IUCN red list from critically endangered to vulnerable classification in the fish fauna. So urbanization and industrialization we should mention because the Sea of Marmara is surrounded by the Marmara region and in the Northeast, Istanbul megalopolis with population approximately 18 million people. And in the East, uh, there is Izmit Bay characterized by heavy industrial development of Turkey. So uh, if you see the map, uh, uh, there are all over the main industrial marine ports in, uh, around Sea of Marmara and uh, the population is very high around the region. So when we uh, look at the fisheries, the fisheries uh, industry uh, are mainly coastal, focusing on banting and demersal species, and it's generally small scale. Uh, while there is a wide variety of species, the catch is dominated by anchovy, horse mackerel, shrimp, sardine, bluefish, mullet, whiting, and hake. Well, while looking at the numbers, the total fish production in the region increased significantly by 40% in 80s uh, due to the expansion of uh, fishing fleet and the establishment of oil fish factories during a period of high industrialization. However, in the last decade, the catch is less than half. And in recent years, uh, Cats of medium pelagic and demersal fish have significantly decreased, but small pelagic fish, mainly anchovy, have remained a significant part of the catch. So the ecological groups contributing to fisheries cats are primarily small pelagic, uh, followed by benthic invertebrates with a smaller amount of medium pelagic and demersal fish. So when we look at the fish catch trends, we should also consider fishing effort change, and this brings us to effort creep. As fishers improve over time, they experience effort creep. They might learn new techniques, get better boats, or use more advanced technologies. As a result, they can catch more fish in the same amount of time, like a single fishing day. If we don't take into account this improvement in fishing skills and tools, this can mask status of fish populations and prevent better plans for managing and protecting them. And what about in our case? First, there, were, uh, there was a time when fishers were incredibly successful, catch per unit effort was too high, but as we moved into the late 90s, things changed drastically and a massive decline occurred, around 90%. What happened? In the 1970s, the national economy invested heavily in the fishing industry. This support came in the form of the credits and the tax breaks. Also, there were some fantastic technological advancements like sonars, bird radars, and cold storage, etc. So the fishing industry quickly became too big for its own good. Uh, and with the help of technology, fishers could catch nearly every type of migratory fish. So when we say migratory fish, 
we should also mention about Istanbul and its fisheries since ancient times. Istanbul is located at the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa. It was always a center of attention for many civilizations. Like Bosphorus, Istanbul stood as a historical hub connecting East and West and facilitating the transfer of knowledge and cultures since AIDS. Fishing was a crucial source of income in ancient times. This is even mentioned by ancient authors like Homer, who noted the presence of Atlantic bonitos, bluefish, dolphins, and bluefin tunas in these waters. Especially bonitos and bluefin tunas were symbols of Byzantine city, Istanbul, the capital of East Roman and Byzantium Empire. They even appeared on the back of bronze coins during the Roman Empire's rules, as you see in the photos here. So from ancient times right up until the 1960s, this area was heaven for fishers for catching much fish as they could carry. In the heart of this region, people could simply lower baskets into the sea and get fish. So fishing here required zero skill. It was accessible to everyone and residents of Istanbul enjoyed protein rich diets. So the waters were teeming with a variety of fish, including Atlantic mackerel, bonito, some weighing up to 25 kilograms, bluefin tuna, bluefish, and even the majestic swordfish. So these were common sites in these waters, and this area used to be full of marine life, which fed and supported many generations. What about 20th century? To understand the gravity of the situation, we examined Turkish national nationally reported fisheries data spanning 50 years. Our goal was to identify which species have become extirpated, meaning they were once present but are now absent from reported catch data. Also, we identified species that have become commercially extinct with catch declines ranging from 80% to 99%. What we found is that the Sea of Marmara has lost 19 extirpated species and 22 species have become commercially extinct as of the year 2017. So I should mention about bluefin tuna. Uh, it's a species highly valued worldwide as well as Black Sea and the Marmara. Its migration timing was very well known, which typically began in April when they moved from the Aegean Sea to the Black Sea with the peak migration occurring in July and August for spawning. The return journey started in the October and continued until December for wintering. Sometimes tuna fish remained in the Sea of Marmara during February and March where they fed on bonitos, mackerels and horse mackerels and this migration pattern was crucial for its fishing. Until 1950s, its fishing was done using dalians, as you see in the photos here, a, a kind of a, a fish traps and hand lines. However, in the 60s, purse stain nets were, were first introduced and this method gained popularity in the following years. In the 1980s, there was a significant increase in number of purse vessels thanks to the government support and financial aid. Fishing was primarily limited to the Sea of Marmara with cats weighing between 300 to 400 kilograms per tuna fish, meaning really big ones. And uh, the Turkish fishery sector also benefited from a rise in bluefin tuna uh, prices in Japanese markets during these times. But there is a narrative among old fishers. They say purse stainers never stopped and caught more and more fish. So tuna fish were heartbroken and gave up to return the, to the Sea of Marmara and Black Sea. And the last reported catch, according to our study, was in 2007. So this was exactly shifting baseline syndrome. It was introduced by Daniel Pauli in 1995, and the problem is that over time, many fish species have declined in numbers and size due to overfishing and environmental change. However, because people tend to use their early experiences as the baseline, they might not realize that fish populations have actually been shrinking for a long time. 
This can lead to what we call shifting baseline. Under this phenomenon, each new generation of fishers or scientists accepts the current state of the ecosystem as normal without realizing that it has changed significantly from what it used to be. It is important to note that shifting baseline don't just describe the loss of biodiversity over time. It's also about gradual change in how people perceive the resources. Also, when we say the Sea of Marmara, it's a typical data pool region like Eastern Mediterranean and data pool regions are characterized by limited availability of information on key parameters such as species composition, abundance, distribution, life history and interactions within the ecosystem. These regions often face challenges in collecting, analyzing and maintaining sufficient data to make informed decisions about fisheries management, conservation efforts and ecosystem health. So data limited stock assessment methods, including CMSY method, play a crucial role in fisheries management, especially in situations where comprehensive data on fish stocks are limited or unavailable. Here, the results of stock assessment for main fish stocks using CMSY method gave us many opportunities to understand state of the fishery resources, as well as ecosystem status of the Sea of Marmara. So using CMSY, we focused on 11 species that make up 90% of the total catch, and these species can be grouped into the three categories, small pelagic, medium pelagic, and the mersel fish, plus one type of benthic invertebrate. In almost all cases, the fishing pressure was way too high. As a result, the amount of fish available for catching was decreasing, and for most stocks, it was at critically low levels. Only the sardine is moderately okay, but for the rest, especially species like bonito, anchovy, and Mediterranean horse mackerel, they were under a lot of pressure from fishing. Now, when we look at uh, 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 how much fish we were catching compared to how many were left in the sea, it wasn't looking, looking good as well. The mersel fish had decreased by about one fifth and the medium pelagic fish had decreased by half in just two decades. This means they were being caught faster than they could reproduce. For small pelagic fish like anchovy and sardine, their populations didn't decline as much, but that was because their predators, the larger fish, were also declining due to overfishing. So although it seemed like they were holding up, it was actually a sign of a bigger problem. So we all know ecological indices are like health checks up for ecosystems. They help us understand how different species interact with their environment, kind of like an ecosystem's well-being report card. So now when we look at the Sea of Marmara, we saw some concerning trends. Uh, the mean, mean uh, trophic level of the catch, which shows the health of fish populations, went from trophic level 4 to uh, trophic level 3.2 in 50 years, which is a significant drop. This means we are seeing fewer big predators and smaller prey animals in the ecosystem. As for the fishing imbalance index, it was on negative side, but also started declining in 2000 and hit its lowest point in 2021. This suggests that the balance between what we are catching and what is naturally there in the ecosystem is getting messed up. So we would like to understand food web relation under those circumstances. By using CMSY biomass outputs for fish stocks, we conducted analysis on food web structure via ECOPAD. Here, there is a flow diagram to depict the trophic positions and interactions among functional groups. So what we found, the total system throughput, which reflects the overall energy and material flows within the ecosystem, was notably higher, signifying a more active ecosystem in 1990s. Following decades, there was a decline in, in uh, system throughput, indicating a decrease in the overall activity of the ecosystem. From 1990s until now, we observed an increase in the system's ascendancy and a decrease in its overhead, indicating a shift towards a vulnerable and disturbed ecosystem. Energy transfer efficiencies between trophic levels showed a gradual de decrease, suggesting that energy was less efficiently transferred within the food web. Specifically, there was a slight reduction from trophic level 3 to trophic level 
four. And the change in mixed trophic interactions and keystone species in the ecosystem represented a strong interplay between bottom-up and waste-based controls. Particularly, mesozooplankton indicated the bottom-up resource-driven nature until 2010s, and anchovy played a bottleneck role in the distribution of energy from lower trophic levels to higher ones until now. Also, as for bluefish, a warm water species with a high thermal tolerance, their importance and influence saw a notable increase from the 1990s uh, to the 2010s, underscoring their evolving role uh, in its food web. So when we say warm water species and high thermal tolerance, what about climate change? We collected sea surface temperature data and checked its trend and basin-wide situation. So sea surface temperature showed positive trends with certain increase per annum is around 0 0.05 uh, centigrade degrees. And sea surface temperature for, for basin-wide also showed an overall increase. Much of the increase occurred along the coastal areas where water circulation is lowered. However, the straits uh, are cooler due to the fast water circulation and along the Istanbul Strait, the increase was much higher than the Çanakkale Strait. So compared to neighboring seas with the Sea of Marmara, sea surface temperature show a slightly lower warming trend than the Black Sea, but slightly higher than the Aegean and the Mediterranean seas. So since we have limited data and no abundance or spatial distribution of fish species, we try to understand possible impact of climate change on the most important fish species, meaning pelagic fish. We used monthly landings data of Istanbul fish market to see some trends. First, the landings of small and medium pelagic fish follow a distinct seasonal pattern. But as, but as I mentioned earlier, this is not a new information. Rather, it has been very well known since centuries because especially bonito and also bluefish are iconic species in Istanbul history and their seasonal migration was festive time in Bosphorus residence. However, when we examined the timing of the fishing season, we noticed shifts. For anchovy, sardine, and Mediterranean horse mackerel, duration of the fishing season shifted one month earlier than before. As for bonito and small blue, blue fish, it extended by almost one month delay. So our conclusion is possible climate change impact on migration pattern of pelagic species, meaning further change in food web relation as well. So here we should remember what resilience and regime shift are. The term resilience is widely used to characterize the capacity to deal with perturbations. An ecosystem's equilibrium state has responses to change in the environment. This response can be a change smoothly, as seen in the A in the graph, uh, or st react strongly, as seen in B, or further, there can be two states, as seen in C. And regime shifts, please look at the photo in the left, uh, regime shifts in the marine environment indicates transitions between alternate ecosystem states. The criteria for identifying a regime shift consider the interactions between external factors, typically abiotics uh, drivers, and the ecosystem's reactions, typically a biotic or ecosystem state. And if their relationship is nonlinear, it is characterized as a sudden or abrupt shift from one dynamic regime to another or discontinuous regime shifts. So because we were able to obtain relative biomass outputs for main fish stocks by CMSY, we go further after identifying stock status, food web relation by ECOPAT, and decided to consider regime shift analysis by integrated ecosystem assessment to understand synergistic effects of fisheries, nutrient pollution, and climate on the Sea of Marmara ecosystem. So we put great effort to collect all available historic data. It wasn't uh, easy, uh, especially on water quality, mainly nutrients and dissolved oxygen, but also climate indices, fishing mortality, and population growth of Marmara regions are considered as drivers. 
Here you see uh, in the right, the principal component analyzers for biotic, abiotic, and for all variables separately also changed in time according to the first principal component, the red line, uh, to understand where it started and where it ended. Uh, time series development of uh, uh, biotic and abiotic variables were checked by traffic light plot and anomaly graphs. As seen in the upper part, biotic variables, mainly fish biomass, also dissolved oxygen values, fell upper quantile and positive anomalies in the beginning of time series, and fell the lowest quantiles and the negative values at the end. Nutrients in the middle part were lowest at the beginning, then gradually increased and peaked, but then decreased and close to initial state at the end. Climate indices uh, at the bottom and fishing pressures were the lowest at the beginning and the highest at the end. So based on those results, we can say the Sea of Marmara's pelagic ecosystem has seen major shifts over the uh, past 25 years. We observed significant change in both ecosystem state and its drivers influenced by human uh, actions. These changes can be grouped into three periods. The, uh, please look at the uh, 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 diagram here. Uh, the initial period under the top-down control of medium pelagic predators, Atlantic bonito and bluefish here, until the mid-1990s a transitional period between mid-1990s and mid-2010s, during which the ecosystem was reorganized, and the late period from 2015 to 2020, when the ecosystem entered a new state. Notably, during this phase, biotic variables, mainly fish biomass, did not return to their initial state. So overall, we recognize these changes as a significant nonlinear shift in the Sea of Marmara ecosystem. So let's see the final episode of the season. In Turkey, a slimy floating mass of yellowish white sea slime is threatening marine life and the fishing industry, especially in the Sea of Marmara and the waters south of Istanbul. But it's also in the Black Sea and the agency, uh, the so-called sea snot. It is caused by poor waste management, helped along by rising water temperatures due to global, global warming. The Turkish government recently launched an action plan to clean up the sli slimy substance. Many say the efforts come too late. Our correspondent has braved the waters off the Sea of Marmara and sent us this report. Webs of thick yellowish slime. They are covering corals, wrapping themselves around crabs and sea urchins, suffocating marine life. But this isn't a horror movie. It's underwater footage from the Sea of Marmara, off the coast of Istanbul. The so-called sea snot, in science-speak marine mucilage, is produced by some algae. The slime has been spreading for weeks, thriving on warm temperatures and pollution. It's a man-made disaster. <laughs> the sea snot is very difficult to grab hold of. This stuff is so slimy, it slips through your hands and back into the water. It's really revolting. An aerial view illustrates the extent of the environmental crisis. Carpets of mucus along the coastline, clogging ports and beaches. As well as affecting the Sea of Marmara and the metropolis of Istanbul, the slime has also taken over parts of the adjoining Aegean and Black Seas. It's a threat to the local fishing industry, and swimming is now impossible in many places. I had heard of the sea snot, but now I can see how bad it really is. I tried swimming where there is less of it, but my skin still felt itchy. We usually come surfing here every week, but now we are really worried. We have to go further out because the slime is all over the shore. I've been diving here for 10 years, but I've never seen a natural disaster like this. There was sea snot when I was a child, but it was never as bad as this. The Turkish government has recently started to tackle the problem. 
the environment minister launched a massive cleanup operation. Dredgers are pumping out the slime and workers are bringing the muck ashore for disposal. It looks like an impossible task and many experts say it's already too late. What we see on the surface is very worrying, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. The real problem is under the water. This is where the slime is spreading and it's getting worse every week. Marine biologists like Mustafa Sarı say the scourge of sea snot is not just a Turkish problem, but a stark warning to the world that climate change is pushing our planet's life support systems to the brink. Okay, so people ask, why this happened? Why this disaster happened in the Sea of Marmara? We know why it's happened. It was a combo of warming seas, pollution and biodiversity loss resulted in the proliferation of phytoplankton, the deterioration of the intricate food web balance and weakening of ecosystem resilience led to the formation of the mucilage process. So mucilage formation lasts for around six months. It started in January and continued until June, 2021. It caused the habitat loss in large area and affected many ecosystem services, including fisheries and caused high economic loss. Here, I, I want to mention about the sustainable development goals. The sustainable development goals, as you all know, were adopted by the United Nations in 2015. It was a universal call to action uh, to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. A total of 17 sustainable development goals are tightly integrated, meaning that action in one area will likely impact on other areas. In our case, we are mostly interested in uh, uh, sustainable development goal 14, life below water, which aims uh, to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. So we are using sustainability and sustainable all the time, but how to ensure sustainability? So this is where the ecosystem approach comes into play. The ecosystem approach is a holistic strategy that recognizes the complicated connections between living organisms and their environment while making decisions about resource use, conservation and development. The key principles of ecosystem approach are integrated management, precautionary approach, adaptive management, stakeholder involvement, and interdisciplinary collaboration to create an effective management strategies, such as applying ecosystem-based fisheries management, designing marine protected areas, climate change adaptation and mitigation measures, and sustainable tourism practices, and even there are contradictions discussing the blue economy development. So what has been done for Marmara after mucilage event on June 2021, the Ministry of Environment, Urbanization and Climate launched the Sea of Marmara Action Plan, constituting uh, 22 targets, including establishing marine protected area, ensuring ecosystem-based fisheries management, and raising public awareness, which are already the key principles and strategies of the ecosystem approach. However, there are real challenges while implementing ecosystem approach, and the fundamental challenge lies in organizing and facilitating collaboration among various disciplines, agents, communities, and organizations with a multitude of desires, values, and objectives that may oppose each other and result in contraproductive associations. There are also other challenges like complexity of understanding and managing ecological dynamics and lack of data for making informed decisions, political and economic pressures lead to unsustainable practices through attraction of short-term economic gains than long-term environmental benefits, global coordination and shared responsibilities issues due to the political boundaries and limited public awareness through limited public support on forcing sustainable practices. 
And those challenges are happening in the Sea of Marmara. And although launching good action plans, it is challenging implementing them properly. So unfortunately, we likely expect other environmental disasters in the Sea of Marmara in very near future. So if I wrap up, the Sea of Marmara ecosystem becomes fragile, fragile to disturbances in the recent decades. And main stressors are overfishing, which is evident by decrease in landings and mean trophic level, meaning withdrawal of predatory species and relative increase in small pelagics and shrimps caused significant decrease in the energetic capacity and pollution mainly by nutrient loads, but also its natural hydrography caused very high total primary production and weak benthic pelagic coupling resulted with greatly exceeding total respiration because it cannot reach to the upper trophic level due to overfishing. And finally, the climate change, which is evident by increasing sea surface temperatures caused change in species migration pattern and will likely impact food back dynamics. So the Sea of Marmara serves as a notable case study illustrating the complex dynamics of human-induced stressors within the context of climate change impact on global marine ecosystems. So my final words are ecosystem approach is the only way to protect our seas. And this is my great team and our great collaborators. I would like to Thank all of them for hard working on the Sea of Marmara, especially, and thanks for your attention. Uh, so my question was, if if the 2021 mucilage event affect other areas in the Mediterranean and where? Uh, well, uh, we know that Black Sea is affected, actually, uh, and also some, uh, especially the northeast part of the Aegean Sea, uh, really affected. And uh, some colleagues uh, told us they saw uh, some uh, kind of mucilage formation, not the strict one like in the Sea of Marmara, but they saw also the mucilage formation in especially the North uh, Aegean Sea. Um, Spencer, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Um, yeah, I was just wondering if there's been much uh, work or research uh, into human-driven ecosystem changes in the area that occurred before the 1980s or, or uh, that occurred before sort of the temporal scope of your study. Okay, uh, so yes, thank you for this question. It is important. Uh, uh, actually, in 50s, 1950s, uh, there is a, a great hydrobiology institute in Istanbul, and uh, they were uh, they made really great works uh, in the Sea of Marmara, identified the, especially this migration pattern and some uh, uh, spawning areas, nursery areas, and uh, there are also some uh, how uh, pollution research at that time. But um, while we try to collect the data. Uh, data set, it wasn't easy to understand the units and the uh, uh, measurement or, or analyzes, uh, especially for, so we couldn't combine them uh, together uh, and we tried to put too much effort and it was only from 80s uh, to uh, 2021 uh, we, we, we could able to collect data. So yes, there are data and we can read, but uh, we cannot um, collaborate all of them because of the some differences in units and some differences for the analysis techniques, actually. Um, Parker was wondering, um, do we know what species of algae are producing all of the mucus? Yes, there are uh, many studies on that. Uh, uh, one colleague from Istanbul University working on phytoplankton, uh, she said it's a, a new species, uh, possibly uh, 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 enters via ballast waters, uh, but it is not published yet, I think. Uh, so uh, they think uh, uh, they are uh, mostly somehow Pseudonitia species and also some other uh, phytoplankton species, especially the dinoflagellates, actually. Um, another question online is, um, 
did did it it seemed to the um mucus did not seem to have occurred to the same extent the following year do we know why so i guess in 2022 there was there a mucus event and if not what changed um actually the 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 the, the thing is um this is a really combo of the uh, both the uh, uh, weather conditions uh, and somehow uh, for example at that time uh, there was uh, there was too much bonito and bluefish uh, around and uh, 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 this makes uh, less fishing pressure on anchovy and sardine like small pelagic fish so this creates a, a, a predatory uh, pressure on zooplankton and this also creates uh, less predatory uh, predation uh, less predation on phytoplankton so this is kind of a all a chain reaction and it happens while with the uh, good weather conditions like some warm water less uh, wind driven in especially in the autumn time and also uh, somehow the uh, differences between the uh, fishing pressure maybe small differences still uh, impact uh, a lot in the sea of marmar for for um uh, chance the increasing the population of phytoplankton especially yeah sorry if i have missed this uh just wanted to know like the studies that have been done on the mortality of different um like uh, species or up to like family level due to the uh event in 2021 so yeah that that is not easy to work as i said uh, thank you samara this, this is a very important question uh, uh, but it is not easy because um, the Sea of Marmara is a data limited region, so we are trying to put too much effort to understand the, uh, how fish stocks uh, impacted or other species. But uh, we have some observation, especially some colleagues made uh, many, uh, many scuba diving and we see uh, there are very, uh, very much dead fish species uh, uh, on the ground, on the sea, sea ground. So, uh, but I cannot say any any uh, uh, real mortality values uh, for specific species, um, and uh, still we are uh, trying to understand how it impacted the fish stocks, especially. And yet, stock assessment results is not uh, so uh, informative for us. Um, there's a related question in in the chat about whether there's been investigations of it on. Um, the zooplankton population. Yes, uh, we have, uh, especially my uh, my student uh, working on this uh, mesozooplankton impact uh, under mucilage event, and uh, we saw that uh, especially the the uh, mesozooplankton population uh, really decreased at that time, uh, but. Um, immediately uh, recovered it was interesting because we 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 conclude that because the this mucus also uh, created the the uh, sugar like uh, and some nutrients in the seawater also so this uh, also uh, supported the zooplankton production in the in the uh, recovery time so yes there is uh, uh, a, at first there was a um, very much a collapse in the zooplankton, but it gradually uh, recovered in in six or seven months. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my um, my uh, responsibility a position as a moderator to take a to ask a question that doesn't have to do with mucus, if that's okay. Um, the the intense fishing pressure uh, within the Sea of Marmara is that do the Aegean Sea or the Black Sea act as refuge for any of the species that are present, or are they just endemic to the the Sea of Marmara? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you, David. Yes, um, probably, especially in the uh, let's say something uh, in the Sea of Marmara, uh, the the northeast close to the Black Sea and Southwest close to the Aegean Sea are very distinct uh, regions actually, because one is, especially the Southwest part is 
high bio biodiversity uh, with uh, mostly uh, similar to the Aegean Sea, but in the northeast part is uh, kind of like uh, mostly pelagic species and not much demersal species. So this region-based uh, differences also, um, uh, as we understand, uh, create some uh, refugees or migration of some, especially fish species and some uh, 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 some invertebrate species uh, to go further uh, through the agency actually. But for Black Sea, Mm, I cannot say actually uh, this happened. Yeah, ask this question. And thank you uh, very much for a very very interesting uh, and, and um, um, uh, uh, presentation too. Um, so I have a question. Uh, I mean, this is um, a um, really dire situations in the ecosystem um, there. Um, so I just wonder what um, is the maybe one or two things that is happening that still give you hope that. Uh, the uh, ecosystems can be restored um, in the future. So what are the kind of things that now that keep you um, having the hope that this will be one day be solved? Okay, thank you. This is, uh, uh, it is, yeah, it's a difficult question. Uh, thank you, William. So um, the ministry has this announced this uh, Marmara Action Plan, and it is really uh, important uh, if if uh, we uh, we we can implement this uh, action plan because it's uh, nicely written and prepared very uh, good, but um, it is not easy because the Sea of Marmara and the uh, Marmara region is the heart of Turkey. The industry is there, Istanbul is there, and the region is very crowded. So this is not easy to tackle all the ecosystem approach and uh, to, to implement this action plan in this uh, region. So I am not so, um, I want to uh, hope, I want this hope, I need this hope also for the uh, sake of the Sea of Marmara, but this is not easy thing because, as I said, uh, the, the the Istanbul is there, all the industry is there, and all around the Sea of Marmara is very populated area. So it is not easy to uh, handle this ecosystem approach properly in this area. So, um, but I know the ministry is trying. Uh, uh, trying to uh, implement uh, some uh, good uh, awareness for public awareness and also construct some uh, biological uh, water treatment systems. But this is very slow and we don't know what will happen in very near future. I mean, for example, now we are in the uh, transition uh, season because it's Ottoman season, and this is this means the zooplankton uh, composition is changing, and uh, this is a very critical period because if there is something uh, uh, breakdown in zooplankton, because also jellyfish, there is a big problem jellyfish in the Sea of Marmara, and if they uh, 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 their population increase a lot, so on zooplankton predation will be high, and phytoplankton will be will have chance to reproduce itself too much. Then when they reproduce itself too much, then they also reproduce this mucilage also. So we, we, can, we can expect anything, <laughs> but not the uh, real recovery, at least very near future for the Sea of Marmara. Uh, 